Hi, it's uh, Roland Benosfein, uh, East Marsh Acres. And uh, yeah, it's another Saturday. Um, so this is uh, Thanksgiving weekend here in Canada. And uh, I'm just gonna go through a few of the chores that uh, I've got for this Saturday. Um, we're also having our Thanksgiving, our family Thanksgiving dinner this afternoon. So it's going to be a uh, relatively short um, time period. And, and I spent some time this morning already working in the garden. Um, so I, I'm just bringing out uh, compost to uh, our coffee grounds and we're putting it into the uh, the raised bed here. I need to actually fill up this raised bed uh, so it matches the other one um, that you see over there. And I need to bring grape plants over here. But uh, I'll, I'll bring you up to date as to exactly what we're doing uh, as we're going along. Um, so you see the uh, the kinds of processes that we go through on a regular basis. Um, so there's the topsoil that we're going to be putting into the raised beds and there's the remains of a uh, load of wood chips that I think I'm going to put back onto the pathway to Rachel's uh, tiny house. Um, in the meantime, uh, you can see we've, we've had a killer frost. Um, it, it was relatively uh, harmless. The plants here uh, look fine. Uh, I took the hibiscus plants inside, etc. And here is the Dajestone Dan or, or um, uh, Sweet William. And here we've got a few of the uh, gourds, etc. from the garden. Um, anything close to the house was fine. Um, maybe what I should do is just give you a glimpse of what's going on with the meat birds at this point. They are about a week and a half out from freezer camp. Um, and we lost one bird earlier this week. Uh, I don't know if it came down with pneumonia or congestive heart failure or something along those lines. Um, the birds themselves are doing well. They like the sun, and so we've turned the uh, the chick tractor uh, sideways, and so they sit in the sun usually, sun themselves, get warm, and they're still eating. Like it's going out of style. They're doing well. Uh, so a week and a half, and then we'll take them away for processing. Um, as you can see, we have brought them across, oh, probably a good third of the, uh, the space that we have here. Uh, so you can see where they were placed going backwards in time. It gets greener and greener. Um, so they were here a couple of days ago, and then uh, yesterday, the two plots, no, so those are the two plots from yesterday, and there's a plot from today, and they'll, we'll move them before the end of the day uh, to the end of the garden there. And then tomorrow, we'll turn around the corner, and we'll go back, uh, so that you get a sense of, um, yeah where they're going and uh, we have some work to do in the next couple of weeks uh, the elderberries are doing fairly well you can see them in the distance there the smaller trees still green they didn't get uh, killed by the frost uh, the grass starts uh, bending over as soon as it gets hit by frost so that's why you're starting to see the distinction between the grasses and the taller uh, it's left over I think from goldenrod and uh, Queen Anne's lace that kind of stuff 
Um, that's the higher materials. Uh, as you can see in the background, the leaves are turning on the, uh, the trees, particularly on the birches. The birches have become, uh, those ones there anyways, in the middle of the shot, are uh, completely bare already. Um, and if you look off into the distance, I'll, I'll do some um, still shots that uh, I've been accumulating over the last uh, couple of weeks while I'm walking. Um, you can see maples in the distance, and they are just absolutely spectacular in terms of the colors that we're starting to see. This is uh, one of the features of living in a temperate rain, rain for, or temper, temperate uh, uh, deciduous forest, which is basically what we have around here. And uh, the climax community. So when you allow the uh, natural cycle to to occur over you know the span of probably 100, 150 years or so, the uh, climax forest is going to be a mix of maples and uh, oaks and so if you take a look at what we've got here I did a little bit of trimming on this oak so this one is the one that started uh, a couple of years ago very very small um, and it is growing quite nicely uh, so we want to keep that one. And over here, starting to see the maple that's beginning to be higher than the rest of the weeds that are around here. So I hope that you can see it. Don't know what kind of maple. I have to look it up yet. But uh, it is... Uh, going to be a nice tree, nice addition. And I think we'll start planting a few more. So our apple and uh, pear trees, so the four that we've got here, two apples, uh, that is that one, and the one over there. And then the, the other two are the pear trees. They are doing well, but they're starting to leave, lose their leaves. Uh, I think I'll do a little bit of pruning later on this fall when they're uh, becoming truly dormant. Um, I did a little bit of pruning on this forsythia. Um, 
so it's got a little bit more room to grow and fill out as an entire bush rather than being kind of one-sided which is what it is right now and I'm going to empty the compost so I'm on my way to the composter and I forgot my whetstone yet again So here's our composter and it's relatively full but uh, I think we still have some some work to do on the actual uh, compost itself so I'm going to just dump we've got a compostable bag that we put inside our compost bin or the one that we have in our kitchen so that it's easy to to dump and to clean out. In fact, uh, the bin itself is relatively clean. And we need to do some maintenance and uh, turn over the compost in this particular bin. few fruit fly larvae in there, or eggs. Um, I'll just show you what we've got in the rest of the garden as well. Um, <clears throat> so the cucumbers are done for the year, even though I see one that I can feed to the chickens. As you can see, we still have the uh, asparagus growing here quite nicely. Here's a cucumber that is very much done. Anyways, there's also some strawberries in amongst the asparagus. The kale is still going strong, but as you can see, the volunteer tomatoes that we had, these are basically done like a dinner. Here's a cabbage that I'm going to feed to the chickens. Another one. These ones don't have heads on them. And you can see that there's lots and lots of pump pumpkins and a variety of squashes, etc. That are that we're just going to leave here for a little bit. Uh, the predictions are that we're going to get a little bit more frost, but it's just a question of going down to about one degree Celsius or so. And uh, so the the squash and the pumpkins are fine in those kind of conditions. They 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 won't grow anymore, but uh, they won't uh, deteriorate or anything else along those lines. So uh, we can just leave them the way that they are. And here's the other job that I'm doing this afternoon. So as you can see, the chickens have been in uh, this run for a while. Um, they have basically cleared it out totally uh, so that there is no more wild materials uh, remaining. And uh, they are uh, about ready for yet another new paddock. So I'm going to make a new paddock here, just a little one, uh, using the, the white nets, um, which are only uh, seven sections of 12, uh, 12 feet apiece. Um, so it becomes a much smaller uh, paddock than this one. Um, but it's transitional, so we'll move from here probably to up there um, in this particular area up here which could stand some new nutrients being uh, placed in here so it's quite a large area that is relatively free so the entire area here is relatively free of all of that stuff so these are primarily 
um, a, a scrub brush. It's a uh, first uh, type of material that comes in after the land has been relatively cleared. And uh, these ones aren't too bad, but some of these others. So let me show you these. These are a type of hawthorn, I think. Some kind of thorn, anyways. And we have piles and piles of that in behind the house over in that uh, direction. Um, these are just awful from the perspective that they uh, spread very, very easily. Uh, so here's a clump, here's a clump, and there you can see clumps all the way through uh, there and in behind the, uh, the greenhouse as well. Um, I would prefer to get rid of them, so we need to bring in a brush hog or something along those lines to actually chop them all down, but uh, that's going to be work for another day, probably for next year, something along those lines. And uh, so we'll, we'll just concentrate on the land that we've already got cleared. Uh, the chickens were here last year. As you can see, there's lower, uh, lower levels of uh, brush, etc. There's not as much of the, uh, um, the weeds, the higher weeds that uh, you're seeing here. Uh, which are primarily goldenrod, uh, for the most part. Um, you can see some goldenrod that's still blooming. So there's one that hasn't been hit yet. Um, so those all go to seed, and uh, um, we'll, we'll take advantage of the grass that's available here uh, and use the red. Um, probably as the last paddock before we put the chickens back into the hoop house for the winter. Um, that's probably going to be in another three or four weeks or so. Chickens have no problems in terms of colder temperatures as long as they've got a place to get out of the wind and out of the rain to keep themselves dry and comfortable. Uh, they are well insulated when they've got their winter uh, foliage on them, their, their plumage. And here you can see the tomatoes are basically starting to finish off. Um, so they're primarily just the Roma tomatoes still. There's one or two of the the Paul Robesons. Um, but they're still growing and uh, they haven't been touched by the frost that uh, has touched anything else around here. Um, and uh, the peppers are doing fine as well. Um, so we're getting to the point where we're starting to to harvest the peppers and so we get ones like this I'll just pick up a few and like this a few more here nice red ones and that one and as you can see there's lots more coming these are the little hot peppers we've been picking them but there's a few more on here and then we still have some eggplant and we are going to try eggplant parmesan for this afternoon Oh, there's another one right there. Um, so there's probably about five. One, two, three, four, five that are still coming. And there's still tomatoes. So these, some of these are Robson still. But the plants are starting to die. It's uh, about that time for their lifespan. Okay, looks like family has come. So I'm going to wrap things up. And it doesn't look like I'm going to get to the rest of the uh, whatchamacallit this afternoon, which is okay. 
means I can concentrate on interacting with grandchildren and my own children. Oh, yeah, so I didn't uh, show this to you. Uh, some carrots and uh, some of our sweet potatoes, which is pretty, pretty sorry crop for this year. Uh, so our sweet potatoes were bothered, I mean, they were in this row, and they were bothered to a large extent by um, our friendly neighborhood rabbits who did not give them an opportunity to actually establish themselves. They were constantly eating the tops off of the uh, sweet potatoes. And that uh, caused a lot of issues for the sweet potatoes themselves because they didn't get a chance to grow under the ground. Um, so even though we saw them above ground, um, and here you see what the rabbits actually do. So here's a carrot and it's got the top totally eaten off of it. And here's two more. as compared to carrots that have not been damaged, which could look like that, or like that. We're really happy with the carrots that we have been able to grow, except we have to find a way. So probably looking at some version of fencing, uh, probably even just checking fencing, um, like what we put around uh, to support the beans themselves, but uh, some form of fencing to uh, just keep the rabbits out. Yeah, take the beans down too. All right, so I am going to walk this stuff back. I think I'm going to grab the sprinkler because we will not need this. Put this back into storage for another year. Right, so I think I'm going to stop it there, and uh, we may do some more stuff on Monday, uh, which is a holiday here in Canada, um, but we'll bring you along if we are doing anything uh, outside. Uh, one of the things we do need to do, so just a, a look ahead, is uh, this pathway from the driveway through to the hoop house where we'll have the chickens for the winter it needs to be cleared. We want to put uh, landscape fabric down, uh, which we received earlier this week or last week. Um, and then we'll put uh, that load of wood chips that you see beside the shed uh, over top of that, uh, establishing more or less a permanent uh, pathway. And we'll have to start wrapping up uh, hoses in the very near, relatively near future as well, because as soon as things start to freeze up, those hoses need to be away and dry and empty. All right, so that wraps it up. Uh, talk to you soon. Goodbye.